dude. And then another one appears the next day. Mm-hmm. So at this point, the lady, who the, like the head of the household, thinks something's going on. And you'd think most people would be like, it's a ghost. She was like, there's got to be some film somewhere in this garage that's fallen from somewhere. So she's looking through all the rafters. and She can't find anything. She cleans out the whole garage. She can't find anything. So she calls the police like, hey, this is weird. So the police look and they notice that there are uh, chew marks like squirrels or rats were chewing on the film. So squirrels are stealing film from Kodak and putting it in their house? The best guess anyone's come up with is that there is a stash somewhere of these film. It looks like pictures from the 1920s and 30s. Some of them are of this house and of the neighborhood. Somewhere in the neighborhood. And some squirrels or some rats must have gotten into it and are trying to use it for something or carrying it around. And they're carrying it through this garage in their path. Why don't they grab a squirrel, put a tag on it? and? Because the odds of getting the right squirrel, there, there's no way. Now... This is cool, and I really would like to know like what this is. Maybe there's some cool pictures that, that we'll get out of this. But it doesn't seem like anyone involved had the bright idea to, I don't know, put a camera in the garage and see where the film comes from, or put a motion sensor, or stand there until a rat runs by carrying some film. I guess they just don't care that much. Nah, nah, nah. So the last thing I got here is... Uh in the Olympics, I don't know which Olympics. I think a winter or a summer. Or, it must be a summer because it's weightlifting. I I read. I didn't uh-huh. read all the details, but uh-huh. there's going to be one team, Korea. Whoa! Not North Korea, not South Korea, just Korea. I guess that's a good thing. I guess. I mean, are they putting on a show or? I mean, I'm real pro South Korea. I'm real leery of North Korea. I'd like to see them unify in some sort of good way. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. At least, you know, I think... As long as they don't unify like in 2009 Lost Memories. I think the real thing is is that yeah, they uh, they want to win something. Mm. They, yeah, that'd be good for national pride on both ends. Yeah. So my thing of the day is awesome. All right. It's... Not anything cool on the internet. It's just something that happened that I found deliciously ironic. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Greenpeace. Had oh, had... great. Yeah. So, uh, way back, they got their ship, the Rainbow Warrior. And the French Secret Service blew it up because Greenpeace is awesome. And the Secret Service decided they had to do something about them being awesome. Great. So they blew up their ship. Awesome. Uh, they have a second ship. The Rainbow Warrior 2. And they've been using it for a while, and they do stuff with it. And they were out in the ocean. What ocean? It doesn't matter. Okay. They were out in the ocean near some reefs, and they pulled the boat up to these reefs to do a protest about people damaging the reefs. Mm-hmm. They damaged the And they the screwed reef. up, and they rammed into the reef and caused a whole bunch of damage to it. Great. And they got fined by the Mexican government $15,000, which they can't seem to pay. They got plenty of money from people. What the hell? Yeah. I don't know the whole deal. All I know is that they were, you know, saying they're going to protect this reef, and then they rammed their boat into it. They're ugly, rusting, leaky, environmentally unsound, giant boat full of dirty hippies. It's because they're not actually... They're people who like lichen. Yeah, they're not environmentalists. Of course, environmentalists are rare nowadays because a lot of people are very... They say they're pro-environment, but they don't actually understand what what any of that means. Like, they'll be anti-nuclear power. Oh, but then they're also anti-coal power. But then they're also anti-hydroelectric. And then, how the hell do you want some... Do you want any electricity? <laughs> I don't know what they want. They want uh, they're gonna want unipower. But they don't really want that. Yeah. No, I don't think they really want that. They don't. So, uh, yeah, they're they, just... They uh, like one. To, to use a word from the vernacular, they're shit-talkers. They're definitely shit-talkers. Oh, my thing of the day is so cool. This is website, 20, the number 20, hyphen go to hyphen 10 dot com. Uh-huh. This guy made a website, but his website looks like DOS. Like, there's no links or anything. It, it doesn't look like a normal website. It, like, comes up in a new window. It looks like a terminal, and it, there's a C colon in it, and you type commands to look at the different parts of his web page. That's kind of cool. I thought it was very, uh, very slick. I should make one that's uh, Linuxy. Make one that's just just make one that's a full Linux shell and hidden around it or thing. Well, actually, this website you can go to where it actually gives you a Linux desktop in your browser. Yeah, you actually showed that to me. Yeah. 
You should probably pull up. Actually, the link. I heard there's another company now where they'll give you a Linux desktop with storage space, and you get an account. So basically, it's like you're buying a computer. You get a free computer, and you can access it from any computer. It's kind of handy. Yeah. Kind of cool. You just keep things on the desktop there, and then you go to another computer, and oh, there it is. Ah. Yeah. If only it had a static IP or whatever, you could really uh, do stuff. Yep. All right. So we talked a long time about things that aren't video games. With how much time? Uh, 25 minutes. That's good. We can talk about video games for 20 eh, minutes. We were always shooting for, you know, 10 minutes of uh, news and then getting right to the bit. Eh, but it'll be a short bit, which 40, is fine. 40 minutes is about the time total we were shooting for. Because uh, I've only been playing one game, and that's Castlevania DS, which I beat. Hooray. And then I realized that there are multiple endings. And it's not like the old Castlevania games where there's the bad ending where it's in black and white and then the good ending where it's in color and then the really good ending where it, like it's in color and then a hand appears at the end. Yeah, it's the best ending. So uh, to not spoil the game, there is a point at which you can kill a dude and if you kill this dude, the game ends and it's the lamest ending to a video game that there has ever been. <laughs> Like, I felt less satisfaction from that ending than I felt from the ending of Mario 1. Congratulations, you win! And then you start over. Less than that. Wow. Nothing. It was horrid. <laughs> and it was about ten seconds long. Awesome. And then there were some credits that I just, I was so, fr I just turned the game off. Wow. Then I discovered that you have to do some read game facts to figure out how to do a thing. Or be perceptive and you'll figure it out and then there's a whole nother game and the game keeps going for a long time and there's more stuff to do and then you get real endings that's just evil yeah because i would have stopped playing at the first ending and just been pissed i would have except that if you're smart you'll get the first ending and then you'll realize wait a minute what was that thing i wonder if i could have done a thing to it mm. the only reason it's a game facts thing is because if you don't have the thing to do the thing and you don't know where to get the thing that'll let you do the thing, you'll think, there's a thing, I can do something to it, and you won't know how, and you won't be able to do it. Uh, I hate games like that. Yeah, that was probably his I bad. wonder if the Game Boy ones were like that also. Well, they all have the same main character, and they're basically the same plot thread, apparently. Mm. And they're apparently rare and hard to find, relatively. What? I know people have them. Oh yeah, a lot of people have them. They're not super rare, but they didn't print, or they didn't make so many of the Game Boy Castlevania cartridges. The first one I know is common. I don't know about the second one, though. Like, they're not rare, 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 but you won't find them for less than 20 bucks, even now. Oh, okay, yeah. 20, they're, 25, they're not... 30 bucks. And a lot That's of just because it's a, a good game. You can't even get, like, Mario Kart Game Boy Advance for cheap. Yeah. Because it's, you know, it's it's a good game. Only the bad games are cheap. So how's uh, Phoenix Wright coming? I beat Phoenix Wright. Yeah, is it good? The E was excellent. It's like Carmen San Diego, but uh, better, awesomer. Apparently, there are three Game Boy Advance games of Phoenix Wright in Japan. Uh-huh. And this game for the DS is actually just a copy of the first GBA game. And you can tell because the first four episodes don't really involve the uh, DS at all. Uh-huh. And then the fifth extra episode is a special DS episode. And it's, you know, it's got different characters and everything. Ooh. So I imagine that we'll get more of these games. The fifth episode is also the longest, and I would say possibly... In terms of plot, I don't think it's the best episode. I think the fourth one would be the best in terms of plot. Uh -huh. And the third would be the funniest. But the fifth one was definitely the highest quality game. There, it, it get a lot of parts. I just didn't know what to do. I was stumped. I had to try crazy things. And there was a lot more evidence, tons of evidence, a lot more investigating, interacting with the evidence. You know, you, with the evidence was like 3D. You could rotate it and stuff. And uh -huh. it was pretty cool. Pretty cool. But the ending is also kind of bleh. And there's two, there's, at the end of episode four, after you beat it, because it's like the game, they don't need a big ending because, you know, the game itself, the plot of itself, is it, it stands good. You know, you don't need a big thing at the after the plot is over to do stuff. But at the end of episode four, someone says, you know, show this, show the evidence that something, something, you know, and you have to pick the, you only get one chance. And I picked the wrong one. In episode five, they do it again, but it's different, and I picked the wrong one. Ah. But apparently that only gets you, like, an extra sentence of content. A whole sentence? Yeah, or, or or two sentences. It only gets you a tiny bit of content if you pick right. See, that's where Castlevania goes. If you pick right, you get a 20% bonus game. It just keeps going, and there's more more stuff and more bosses. Yeah, this, if you pick right, it just changes the ending a tiny bit. Ah. And I'd say the ending after episode...